Hey, how are you doing, you two? Yes, uh, it's been a while since I posted something on this um, uh, channel of mine. Today I want to talk about uh, Ebola and uh, how it might, uh, how it pertains to people of the black community. Um, I heard um, over the internet that that um, there are more um, people in the U.S. Um, that has been affected with the Ebola virus, and uh, so what I'm going to do, I, I have my uh, my uh, tablet in front of me, and so um, I'm going to um, you know show you a website on it, and I'm going to turn it on, you know, facing the um, monitor so you can read it. And um, well, it's um, October October 15, 2014, as I'm speaking now. And um, I'm I was concerned about the Ebola crisis, uh, like everyone else. Um, we we're told initially that um, you know it's it's not a disease or a virus that is um, born and uh, I'm starting to, starting to think contrary. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I think it, the movie came out in, um, let's see, 1995, it could have been, and um, it was called um, Outbreak, and it actually discussed the Ebola virus, and that um, it's one of the most deadliest viruses around. And uh, the movie took place in um, a country in Africa. I forget which country. And um, th that it had spread, uh, I think it spread to the U.S. or so. One of the uh, scientists uh, gets the disease and they have to try to get a... Uh, treatment um, but, but the movie what, what was really interesting about the movie was that you know people getting um, quarantined and I remember in the movie you had people wearing these suits like a, something that goes over their head and uh, every part of your body is covered you know and um, I got the impression because even the face was uh, covered and they had like this air thing underneath that it was something that was airborne meaning that if someone has the virus and just the, the, the vapors of the mountain, you know, your breath, you know, uh, has the virus and you can get it, you know. And um, so, um, I'm concerned about our safety here in the United States. Um, I'm sorry, I, my my computer's uh, acting up. I've been getting a lot. I've been getting viruses on my computer, and part of the reason why I can't even use, um, I I I would ordinarily be using my um, my tablet to film it, but I'm doing my using my laptop. My laptop has a virus and I can't navigate between the pages on uh, my computer. So, so, but the only thing I can use, you know, is the, you know, the, the camera on the computer. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to try to get, okay. It's really weird. My apology from going, going back and forth. But, well, so, so what I want to talk about now is um, the politics of Ebola and how it's going to affect, or, or how it is affecting black people, whether you, you're in the U.S. or you live on, on the continent of Africa, okay? So, you know, I heard that um, you have some casework, I mean, um, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth. I 
this. I'm just navigating through my laptop. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what prompted me to do the video was that when I was, you know, surfing the internet regarding the uh, Ebola, it caught my attention regarding a student. The person's Niger of Nigerian ancestry, and uh, he was being he was denied um, being accepted to the school. Okay, it reads well. I'm going to show you Let's see. the title. Let me show you the the title name. Let's see. Let's try to show it. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Navarro College instead of apologizes after rejecting Nigerian applicant over Ebola, Ebola fears. Okay. So that's the name of it. And I'm going to start reading it. Okay, I need my glasses for this. Okay, a Texas college apologizes on Tuesday for what it's calling incorrect information after multiple international applicants received a rejection letter saying that Navarro College has not accepted international students from countries with confirmed Ebola cases. Navarro, a two-year public college in course Cosacana is about 60 miles from Dallas, where two health care workers have been diagnosed with Ebola. The most recent case was confirmed early Wednesday morning. Thomas Eric Duncan, an Ebola-stricken Liberian man who was treated at Texas Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, died last week from the illness. The letter recipients are from Nigeria, a country that hasn't had a new Ebola case in more than 21 days. Okay, and 21 days is like the window period. So if you're going to get it, <laughs> that's when you're usually going to get it within that a 21 day uh, window period. Okay. Okay, let me uh, read on. The World Health Organization is prepared to declare the Ebola outbreak over in Africa's, Africa's largest country as soon as Monday. Nigeria managed to maintain the Ebola outbreak to just 20 cases, all connected to a Liberian-American air traveler who brought the virus into the country in late July. Okay. Okay. Idris Bello, a Nigerian-American who now lives in Texas, posted Navarro's college rejection letter to Twitter earlier this week. In an email, Bello told the Post that he received a copy of the letter from Kamor Abidogun, a friend of his in House Houston, who works as a mechanical engineer. Okay, and then he he posts it. So let me read the show you the post. Let's see. Okay. So anyone who's seen this there to, you know. So what I did there, you know, so when you're watching this video, you just put it on pause so you can read it in, in detail at your own leisure. Okay. Let me scroll down. Let's see. Who uses like a joke? Okay, according to Bello, Abedogon has multiple relatives who used his Texas address to apply to the college, including his brother-in-law who lives in Nigeria. Those applicants, those applicants received identical letters signed by Navarro College International Programs Director. Oh. Our college, okay, 
in response to media queries, the college issued a statement about the letters. In quote, the, the college says this, our college values its diverse population of international students. The statement read, this fall, we have almost 100 students from Africa. Unfortunately, some students receive incorrect information regarding the applications to the institution. Okay, end of quote. So I don't know what that means. So are these, is the school saying that they received the wrong letter and that they will be uh, accepted? That That's interesting. Let's see. Let's see, okay. Bello said he was disappointed with the college's response to the letters, adding that the issue of stigmatization he sees at play here is not just about Nigerians, but about bigger picture, but about the bigger picture, end of quote. Um, referring to the current Ebola outbreak in his home state, he added, should universe, universities in Boston now start rejecting student applications from Texas? Wow. Okay, that's that that that's a good uh, question. That's very provocative. Okay, so wow. That I this is the first time I'm actually reading it. See when I saw this this uh story, I was just looking at the the um headline, you know, about the Niger about Nigerian students. And so what that what what this story is saying that you don't have to actually be living in Nigeria. You could be living in the United States, but of Nigerian ancestry. Hear that? Cause so, so what the, the, these are smart Nigerians <laughs> and they wanted to find out what the deal was. And so they put the U.S. address, applied, and they got rejected. Okay, isn't that something? And in the end of this this story, they're saying, well, what if someone from Texas applies to a school in another state in the U.S.? Would that would they be rejected? Very good question. So that that is really telling. Okay, so that's really reinforcing what I really want to say on this video here. Okay, it's strengthening my case. Okay, but look at this now, okay. I'm turning another page, okay. Okay, just a moment, it's loading up. Okay. Okay, now this is another Okay, what I want to show you now is that a couple, but maybe within two months, two months ago, um, these American doctors were in West Africa and they caught the disease and they were infectious and they were allowed to come to the U.S. to be treated. Now the U.S. never treated Ebola because it, it does, it does not come from here. And these doctors were brought over and treated. Now, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't feel confident being treated at a place that never treated that condition. But the U.S. allowed them in. And it would be very interesting if these doctors were the, were the white doctors. Okay? What if, it, what if it was a doctor, of, uh, an African doctor, let's say with dual citizenship, and they, they fly back, back and forth to the U.S. and, and uh, uh, Africa, or, 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 or let's say they, they, they lived in uh, Europe, and they were helping out in Africa and then come to the U.S., you know? What would, what would have been the outcome? So let me show you this uh, heading. Okay. Oops. I'm sorry. Sometimes. Okay, let me see. Okay, U.S. doctor infected with Ebola out of hospital. Okay, I want to try to scroll up. 
Hmm, such dwelling down. Let me see. Okay. So I have to... Okay. Okay. What I want to show you here that it's it was actually three doctors, as you can read. It says the third American medical missionary infected with the deadly Ebola virus while working in West Africa, etc., etc. And they were allowed, scroll up, and they were allowed in the country. Isn't that something? And I think these are some of the docs, you know, some of the people. I apologize, uh, YouTube. I, I don't have the technical savvy, okay? I don't have the savvy of navigating, you know, how some of you guys can go back and forth and show the information and, you know, and, you know, I, I don't have that savvy yet. So, let me turn it. Okay. So, as you see, we had three doctors and, uh, let me see. Okay, I want to see if they give the doctors that the people's name who were infected. Okay, as you can see, like like when you watch the video, you can always put on pause and read the, what I just showed you. Okay, uh, one doctor's name is Rick Sakara, and then let's see, let's see. Okay, let's see. Sakara said his friend and fellow medical missionary and Ebola, Ebola survivor, Dr. Kent Rantley, communicated with me about a week ago and let me know in no uncertain terms that, that this was not going to be a quick recovery. Okay. Okay. And this is all happening in late August. Okay. Okay, it said here that, that that person, Sakara, entered the Nebraska Medical Center, Center's Isolation Unit, September 5th. So isn't that something? So they were brought here in the U.S. As you see that it was the third American, okay. Okay, I, it, is, it is very benevolent for the U.S to want to help uh, its citizens and bring them here for treatment. I think that's very benevolent. But I'm what I'm what I'm getting at with this video is will it treat people the same according to race? Okay. Again, I don't know the race of those um, three medical doctors, but the chances are, you know, there's not that many black doctors in the US and a black missionary doctor, that's probably even fewer, okay? But you never know, okay? But it's my, my concern, you know, whether certain peoples are getting preference. Excuse me, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to take off my glasses, and that's rude. Um, but they're, they're my reading glasses. <laughs> okay, so that's that particular video, okay? And then there's another one. That I want you to read to see. Okay, let me see if I can navigate in there. There was another one where it says that it's not airborne, but I'm contesting that. Okay, let me put it on. Let me find that video. I'm, I'm going on my my tablet. One of the tabs. Windows that I had open is closed by mistake, so I'm going to put in try to find that one video with the it's from the CDC. Um, okay, yeah, I think I found it. Okay, it's loading up, and now I'm going to play it. It's a particular portion on the video. Where the guy from the CDC says, let me just put, stop playing it. Oh. 
begin with that first case of Ebola diagnosed here in America. A patient quarantined now in Dallas, and then you see uh, the ambulance. He rode to the hospital. It's out of commission right now. The EMT is now quarantined as well. They're actually referring to that first person that died. Africa, the worst right. outbreak ever. It's still spreading. We've got I guess it's from Texas to Africa, starting with ABC in Sicily, Vega. Duncan. I know. His name is Duncan. He's from Liberia. George, good morning to you. The patient and he died a week ago. Here in isolation in an intensive care unit. Those doctors and nurses. Okay, let me put forward a little bit. So we know now uh, on this day, he, he unfortunately, he died uh, last week. And he's a good Samaritan. He was just helping out a, a pregnant, a young 19-year-old pregnant woman in his country. He brought her to the hospital, uh, I mean, a, a clinic. That clinic was full treating sick people, so he brought her to another facility. That one was full also. So then he just brought, you know, drove her home. And she died later on that night. And uh, again, we, we don't, they didn't know what she had. Um, you know, she was a pregnant lady and, you know, they, they didn't know. And um, I guess Duncan didn't know either. And then he was tested, you know, the um, temperature. He had no fever. So he wasn't contagious at that point. And it was a, a couple of days after his arrival in the U.S. did he get his first symptom and he went to the hospital. And then they to told him to go home. And then he returned two or four days later in a in an ambulance. And th that's the story that you're hearing now, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, he, he died being a good Samaritan. My heart goes out to him and his family. The, uh, Mr. D you know Duncan. Okay, let oh let me scroll back. There's a part in this video where it says that it's this not importation or this case of Ebola, so that it does not spread widely. Ebola begins with fever and chills and progresses to severe weight loss and internal bleeding. This is not transmitted through the air, so it doesn't transmit the way other diseases are transmitted that people are familiar with. You have to come into contact with bodily fluids. The CDC has dispatched a team of what they call disease detectives here to Dallas. They are already on. Okay, so you heard that. They claim that's a CDC member that is not airborne. But I contest that because look at this. I'm going to have another video here. Okay. Okay, now look at this now. Okay. Ebola Ibra, jet passenger alert over U.S. nurse. Okay, what happened to her? She's one of a series of, what do you call it, people who treated, okay, so as you can see here, the second person infected in the U.S. and it gives her name, fell ill on Tuesday. Both she and the nurse Nina Pham, uh, 20, 26, had fever. I mean, I'm sorry, had treated Liberian, uh, you know, that uh, Mr. Duncan. Okay, so. She had, this person, you know, two, two nurses who had treated uh, Mr. Duncan um, caught the disease. Now, why was it the U.S. again? Um, well, that's right. I have to backtrack. M Mr. Duncan, he, he didn't know he had it when he came in. And that's why they were treating him. He, you know, um, I was thinking about something else. But... Um, but, you know, this hospital that these ladies, nurses worked in, had treated Mr. Duncan. And, um, again, Mr. Duncan just passed away last week. I think it was last Thursday. Today's the 15th of October. And uh, this story is posted, let's see. Okay, it's posted today, the 15th. That's 1-5, I'm saying, the 15th of October, 2014. Okay, so um, I think it's like less than a week ago, 
after his passing and that these nurses uh, got tested positive. And again, they, they're infectious because now they have a fever, you know. And this, the woman that you, that I just showed you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But either way, um, as you can see, now th these are American nurses. They were in an American facility and it looked very impressive, the facility in Texas. And yet they got it. And I'm sure they know about Ebola and the, the hospital knew about Ebola and they know that it's highly contagious and you have to be, have protective gear. And yet they got it. Okay. How do they get it? Okay. I'm sure they know about washing their hands or, you know, all, all those things, but they got it. And how did they get it? Okay. This woman, um, she looks like a possibly African American or even Afro Latino. And then the other lady, other nurse, looks like a, a woman of East Asian ancestry. Okay. And uh, I, I don't see her picture here, but she was on another, another video of her face showing. Um, but, okay, um, you have these two ladies. And uh, so what happened? Okay. So does the CDC have to now uh, change its its understanding of Ebola and that it is airborne? How do we get it? How 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 do they get it? You know, um, you know, they said that that it's in direct contact with bodily fluid. So is it that it's a break in the skin and then the the uh, a bodily fluid, but, but what nurse is going to touch someone's bodily fluid? You know what I mean? Um, so this leads me to believe that this thing is airborne, just like that movie that came out in 1995 about the, about the Ebola, that it, it, it's airborne. They, that's why they had the, 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 mat, the gas mask and everything on, you know? Um, so what does this mean? You know, what were, what, what, it's, it's, I know, I just start to feel, you know, hypersensitive about our safety, that we're being told one thing about a medical, you know, about this virus, but it's always something, con it seems like something contrary, you know? And uh, this nurse who now is, um, has a fever, so now she's infect, infectious. You know, she's um, she was infectious when she got on the plane. You know, the early stages. But it's like saying a little pregnant. If you're feverish, you're infectious. And uh, so it's not such thing as a little pregnant or a little a uh, bit of Ebola. You know, so the people on that plane. You know, um, they they were notified. Um, it's over 100, it's 132 passengers it says that they have to um, get in contact and um, find out if they're infectious. You know, it, 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 it's horrible. This is a, a, a big breach and um, it, it could be an epidemic. So I, I'm, I'm concerned about us as a community um, that you know, a lot, a lot of healthcare workers are people of color, and uh, they get exposed, and then they come home to their uh, loved ones or the, you know, or neighbors, and there you go. So it's really something how a, a disease could uh, spread in our community, and what could happen to those, those of us. Who are, um, I'm sorry, um, I'm concerned about those people just because of their race. Um, in the case of those um, Nigerian students, you know, they, they, were, they were denied school. Okay? I understand that, you know, it's good to use precaution and uh, to, to keep things stationary. Um, but I just saw with that one article 
that they had an American address and it was still denied, you know? So, what about American, uh, American students who, let's say, they want to go to school um, abroad? Or let's say schools in uh, uh, the Caribbean or, or South America? Will they turn every American down, you know, for uh, entry into those schools? Or will they just say, oh, well, uh, we'll accept American students, but not those people from Texas, or not people from those, uh, that city, okay? It, 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 it will be very interesting to find out um, how it's handled. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, how it's, okay, it, there was, um, so just, there was something that indicated like the, the, the first Ebola case. Um, okay, just see here. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> I accidentally accidentally pressed on the uh, it's hard to navigate sometimes because you, you rest your thumb down and then you accidentally press, you know, Press something. Okay, well, what I want to show you, at least, I, I'm going to try to find it again. There was. Okay, now they, they say that that the first Ebola case that, that hit the U.S., that, that was confirmed in the U.S., was um, it, they, they attributed that to um, Mr. Duncan, the, the man from uh, Liberia. And, um, but actually he's not the first, he wasn't the first Ebola, you know, case. At least how, how they, how they refer to him, you know, because they're, they're attributing, let me get my glasses, I'm sorry. They attribute this the first case being from okay the first Ebola case has been diagnosed in the United States but a top health official said today there is no doubt um, we will stop it here okay okay so that man that was that I showed you earlier his name is Dr. Tom Greeden. Okay, he's the director of the CDC. That means the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Okay. So they there. So what I'm bringing up here that uh, Mr. Duncan, I'm sorry, Mr. Duncan is being considered the first Ebola case being diagnosed here. But my 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 concern, you know. Um, is that to attribute that to a black person, I think could, could really bring um, just a, a negative repercussion, repercussion on our community, okay? Now, he wasn't the first one that, that got it here, and that there were doctors, or, you know, those missionaries. And so, to exclude those people, and they had it, you know, and to allow them in, in the U.S., so it, it might, it might with, with certain ears, suggest that a black person brought it in the U.S., when in actuality, there were people brought here and that, that had had the, the condition, okay? So that that's my that's my concern. Uh, biasness. People just going to see that and say, you know, black people brought it in the in the U.S. When in actuality, there were whites that came in the U.S. first who had the disease. And again, um, once it was known that Mr. Duncan had it, you know, um, he had American staff treating him. 
but he still I mean, the, those nurses and uh, you know still still got it even with all the protection. So the same thing with the the first people, uh, the missionaries who were brought in the U.S. In fact, you know, infectious. Um, the people there, it seems like the, the staff there, um, I don't think got it. So you, you're wondering how for one facility uh, who treated somebody with Ebola, why they didn't get it, and then this uh, place in Texas who treated the um, uh, Duncan, we have a, a, at least not two people. So it's it's really weird, you know. So I I want to uh, stay on top of this uh, this news to find out about any other um, outbreaks here in, in the U.S. and if any biasness is being put upon uh, people of the black community, whether or not they're being treated differently than the general population. Okay, so. That's all that I want to talk about, and um, again, I don't want to sound like I'm just being too, uh, up, you know, you know, upset about this, and you know, um, what do you call it, political about this, but it's just something I wanted to share. And you know, when I notice something, you know, um, things that aren't, you know, the, when the scale isn't balanced, you know. I'm going to bring it out, and that is why I did open up this um, channel of mine. So, if you have any, you know, questions, concern, you know, uh, you know, if you if you agree with uh, some of the things that I'm saying, you know, give me a a, a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, or comments, you know, please let me know. So, take care and enjoy YouTube. Bye bye.